Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Dr. Harry John Visser II is an accomplished foot and ankle surgeon from St. Louis, Missouri. He's practiced for 40 years. He's also an accomplished poet. His newly released poet, Reflections and Sensualist Romantica, reflects a different side from his scientific achievements, an array of beautiful short poems, a charming ode to his devotion to his beloved wife. Dr. Visser II's new book expresses a longing and deep devotion that resonates within each emotionally charged installment. Poetic Reflection and Sensualist Romantica, a captivating collection of expressive poetry, and author Dr. Harry John Visser II is our guest on This Week in America. Dr. Visser, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. Well, thank you, Rick. I'm really looking forward to this, and we'll we'll talk about the poetry here in a second. I want some information on your background. A very successful doctor and teacher. Give me a little bit of background, and then we'll find out where this artistic side took over. Well, I'm originally from a real small town in northeast Ohio, um, a, a town of probably only about 450 people. And the high school I went to uh, took three towns uh, to make the district, and we had 69 kids in my graduating class. So I had a really small school. I then went to a, a real small liberal arts college in Northeast Ohio called Hiram College. Oh, sure. uh, and its claim to fame is uh, that James Garfield uh, was president of the uh, school at one time. And so it was originated back in 1850. So it, was a, a really, it gave you a really good liberal arts education. I, I was a chemistry major there, and I um, graduated there with a Bachelor of Arts, actually, uh, man and cum laude. Uh, interestingly, I was not that great of a student in high school. Um, and my mother kind of really pushed me along to, to get, get more. She said, you're going to definitely have to go to school. That's, that's the way you're going to get ahead. And she kind of pushed me and so forth. And so I wasn't really a big reader when I was young either. I remember I used to, uh, <laughs> you had to give a book report uh, every every summer during uh, your each grade, and oh, yes. I used to do big red every <laughs> every every time. And so I guess to be about my junior in high school, and I started to kind of turn things around and got much more interested in academics and so forth from that standpoint. And then um, after I uh, graduated from Hiram College, I uh, uh, was accepted to the Ohio College of Podiatric Medicine, which was in Cleveland, Ohio, and did my four years there. And then I ended up here in St. Louis when I did my residency program in foot and ankle reconstructive surgery, which was a three-year program then, uh, and finished that in 1981. And then uh, about four years later, I ended up becoming a residency director, and which was pretty young um, considering uh, in that time. I was only about 33 years old at the time. And I've been a director since, actually, and uh, I just this past uh, year uh, trained over 100 residents. Now I've trained about 104 Amazing. residents in foot and ankle reconstructive surgery. First of all, what made you pursue uh, foot and ankle surgery? What was it about that that as you're looking around trying to figure out what I'm going to do, what was it about that, uh, that type of medicine that, that appealed to you? Well, interestingly, uh, at the time I was coming out of college, it was, you know, the height of the Vietnam War, and uh, we were all uh, in the draftees, potential draftees uh, in the lottery system, and uh, a lot of people were, were enrolling in medical school. So at that particular time, it was extremely difficult to get into to, uh, an actual allopathic or even osteopathic medical school in those days, just because of the fact that people were trying to, you know, basically get a deferment, an educational yes. deferment. Sorry about that. And um, so, interestingly, uh, one of my friends a year ahead of me basically said, you know, you ought to look into the profession of podiatry. I think it's an up and coming profession. And so I, I did look into it and I found, yeah, you know what? I think this is something I'd really be interested in because I was always interested in a surgical field. And that's basically how I uh, 
uh, got into that. Interesting. With us on the program is Dr. Harry John Visser, V-I-S-S-E-R, the second. The book is Poetic Reflection in Sensualist Romantica. The book's available at Amazon.com, ChristianFaithPublishing.com, all of the usual places. You can link up on our website, This Week in America.us. Sort of establishing with Dr. Visser his, his background and accomplished background in, in medicine, He's a national and international lecturer, presentations in, in nine different countries. This part of the, the being the residency director, talk about the, the directorship there. What's that like working with these young people? And you can probably still remember what it was like when you were entering the, the school to get into this profession. Yeah, the residency uh, training is a, you know, it's a, it's a very demanding uh, amount of training. It requires a lot of devoted time, uh, and it's it's really, I really love working with the younger residents now. They're very, very highly interested and motivated. Um, you know, they keep talking about the younger generation, and I think just like our parents, my parents thought we were all kind of deadbeat. Uh, exactly, each, yes. <laughs> <laughs> each generation kind of looks down at the other, but it, it's really, really rewarding to work with these uh, young people who are really, really motivated to learn. And that, that makes teaching much, much easier. When you have people who want to learn, uh, then that makes them much, much easier than in a situation where in some instances where people really don't want to learn, you're trying to push, push whatever it is that you're trying to teach them. When you're dealing with all of these, these, I don't call them youngsters, but young adults as they're starting on their profession, getting the education to, to launch them on their careers, what's it like for you? Is it, uh, is it motivating that you have these young people, young thoughts around you, and maybe, again, sort of see yourself with that enthusiasm that you had when you were their age? Yeah, well, it's pretty interesting that, you know, at my age that I've still been able to maintain a high amount of interest. I've always been highly academic, and I constantly keep up with uh, all the new academics and so forth, which I relate to uh, the younger people. And, and the big advantage is the fact that having practiced as many years as I have, I know I have the academic experience, I also have all the clinical experience, and I think that's what's really important is that the youngsters coming up are certainly well-trained in academics, but obviously their clinical experience still hasn't developed uh, because they haven't had that much experience at this point. And so offering all this experience, I think, is what's really, really helpful and keeps me motivated to continue to work with them in the profession. It's interesting. So you're not directing, uh, by, by talking to students, addressing them with somebody that did this 30 years ago. It's someone who probably did it this morning or did it just a couple of days ago, actually in the clinic. Right. You exactly have to continue to grow as each generation comes along and each group, you have to continue to grow. You have to stay on top of all the new innovations that are out, basically apply the innovations uh, to surgical procedures. Like just this morning, I was you know, did a, a fusion on a patient with an external fixator. Uh, again, we have to uh, relate all these clinical experiences to the academics that are present now. So you just can't stay stagnant and say, well, yeah, this is all my experience. You have to correlate it with all the new advanced uh, academia that constantly comes out in just huge amounts of waves. And it, it's, it gets to be daunting sometimes to keep on top of all that. But that's what's really important if you're going to be in a teaching role. Dr. Harry John Visser II is our guest on the program. We're talking about his practice. I'm going to ask one more question I'm fascinated by. He has his hands full with all he's doing and actually seeing patients in, uh, in being in, in the, uh, the school and discussing and, uh, and teaching young people. A poetic Reflection and Sensualist Romantica is his book of poetry. Talk about the professional honors that you've, uh, you've uh, accumulated over the years. Well, yeah, I've been really fortunate along that line. I actually, in my high school, I uh, got into their Distinguished Hall of Fame. Uh, that was in 2015. And then my college, Hiram College, I was uh, inducted as a fellow in the Turner Society. Turner Society is the scientific portion of, of the college. Uh, and they award that to uh, people who they feel have accomplished scientific uh uh, innovations and um, 
passed it, you know, passed it on. And then secondly, at, at Hiram, I got into Garfield Society, which is a Garfield Fellowship. And that basically is a top honor that you can get from the college. And then in my uh, medical school, I uh, was awarded the um, uh, Iowa uh, Hall of Fame in 2015. I also, interestingly, in 2019, did the commencement address at my medical school, also oh, at Kent, uh, the, the Kent State School of Podiatric Medicine. And what was even more interesting, I did the commencement address at my high school uh, back in around 2:15, and that was real surreal because <laughs> sitting up there and giving that talk and looking into the gym area where I was like in kindergarten was <laughs> something that was kind of um, oh, yes. kind of humbling, actually. What yeah. a remarkable experience and background that you've had in medicine. And we'll shift now to talk about the fact that not only an accomplished career in medicine, but you are now a published author. And I'm not talking about a, a crime mystery or possibly a textbook. This is poetry and a, a book uh, that's receiving rave reviews, Poetic Reflection and Sedulous Romantica. Where did this this love of poetry come from? Well, I, I've always, you know, I was always interested in the romantic uh, poets like, uh, you know, Lord Byron and Percy Bysshe Shelley and uh, John Keats. So I read a fair amount of that. And honestly, my education wasn't really oriented uh, towards the humanities very much. Obviously, we took what was required uh, for a pre-medical uh, pre education, but, I, you know, I, I did not take anything accentuated that way. I honestly didn't even know I had the talent to do it. I just began to kind of put these together, you know, sending some things to my wife by text and so forth. And then I kept kind of doing it. I found, hey, I could put these things together really pretty quickly. And I thought, you know, they, they look pretty good. And I, you know, my wife was very, uh, um, you know, stunned by <laughs> uh, the, the poems that I could do. She didn't realize that I had what we, you know, what we talk about, um, the right side of the brain is usually for the science people. And then the left side of the brain is usually for the uh, people who are more or less in the arts and, and that. And he said, where the heck did you come up with this? So she calls me kind of the Renaissance man. <laughs> so I just, yeah, I, I didn't really know I really had a talent for it. Uh, it's just, I, I've always had a fairly good vocabulary. And so I think with that, I was able to construct a lot of things. And it's from my readings, I think, from the Romantic Poets, uh, which is something that, you know, a lot of people don't do too much of unless you're really oriented uh, to that, um, was the way that I probably picked up uh, – the basics for how to approach uh, writing poetry. How did it go from, you started off with these texts that uh, amused your wife once she got over the fact that, does he have a ghostwriter or are these actually his thoughts that are <laughs> right, writing them to me? Yeah, once you got over that, how talk about the thought process, the motivation to, to put them in a book form, a collection, and then put them into uh, poetic reflection in sensualist romantica. How did the whole book come about? Well, the book came about, so basically, uh, you know, I worked through all the year, and then uh, she's retired. She was a nurse anesthetist, and she had retired for about five or six years, and she has a home up in Michigan that she inherited from her parents, which is on a lake there, and so she likes to go up there for about six weeks out of the uh, summer, and, you know, I usually I can only get up there once a, uh, a week, maybe, or I don't at all. So the separation is what kind of motivated me to do all these different types of poems. And so once I had accumulated all these, uh, I kept them on one area where I kept all the text and I basically had them all printed out. And I thought, well, I'll go ahead and submit it. And I was looking at some publishing companies. And so I submitted to the uh, Christian Publishing Company, and they got back to me pretty quickly that they thought, yeah, this is something that we would really like to publish. So um, that, that's how that basically and came about. the rest about. is so history. That, what's that? Yeah, the rest is history. I mean, it's out there now, oh, yeah. and people are enjoying the book. The title, Poetic Reflection in Sedulous Romantica. Talk about how you came up with that. 
<laughs> well, again, I, my vocabulary kind of took over there. And that came to mind when you were mentioning it, yes. <laughs> I was trying to think of something that would be a little bit unique with that uh, as far as uh, an opening. And then I kind of like abstract art, too, and that's how I kind of came across that drawing. Yes, uh, I actually cover. drew it out myself on the cover. Um, so, yeah, that's that's basically how that, that came about uh, is... Um, uh, I just like different words and I have a fairly, you know, extensive vocabulary. And I thought, and I thought about it for, oh, maybe about 10 minutes. And I thought this is probably the best I could come up with as a good title. And I thought it correlated well to the poetry that I had in the book. Well, and it's, it captures your attention when you hear the title of the book, Poetic Reflection and Sedulous Romantica by uh, Dr. Harry John Visser II, our guest on the program. It captures your attention. You almost feel smarter once you're able to read the, uh, the title of the book. So mission accomplished with that. What do you hope the takeaway is? Uh, you've done such an excellent job tapping into that bond, that special relationship you have with your wife. What do you hope that the average person gets from reading this book? Well, I would hope that it would, number one, maybe generate an interest in poetry, and also, I think, um, possibly get an interest in, obviously, your wife or your girlfriend, and maybe use some of the po the poems themselves in, in instances where you may be going through a rough time or something. And I, I know, you know, women in general like poetry. They like flowers. These are things that I think men forget about sometimes, how sensuous women really are and how they feel. They definitely feel much differently than men do. And they like different things than men do. And sometimes you have to step back as a guy and say, hey, look, and we got to think about what's important for them and what makes them happy and makes us feel like we are actually showing them how much we care and love them. And so I think hopefully some of those poems, uh, I'm more than happy to let anybody use the poems and they can say they write them. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> if it will help their situation. <laughs> Do you find that poetry in expressing yourself may be more impactful than just throwing a few sentences together as you're, as you're trying to express your, your love, your devotion to your wife, rather than just saying that, doing that in the way that you do so well in your book, Poetic Reflection and Sensualist Romantica. Is there something about poetry that that's easier for you, for the poet, to express yourself possibly? Yeah, I think it gives you much, much deeper reflection about yes. how you really feel about a person. Uh, sometimes, you know, the everyday lifestyle, everybody's rush, rush, rush with all the things that they have and all the responsibilities and the stresses they have in life that basically if you can sit down to them and express, hey, this is how I really feel about you and this is what you mean to me. And it really reflects well, I think, to the relationship, makes the relationship a lot stronger, uh, especially when things uh, get stressful, uh, which we all have to deal with many stresses and lives. You know, this is such a captivating collection of expressive poetry. Does it help you, the writer, sort of sort out your emotions, maybe tap into something you, you really had not thought of before when you're trying to express yourself in poetry? Yeah, I think when I actually started beginning writing these poems and realized that I could actually come up with things that were really um I thought were relatively good. It, it really inspired me to, you know, do more and more of them and approach different poems in, in different ways. And again, the inspiration comes from, you know, your emotional affection toward a person. I don't think you can write poems just to write them unless you have something really motivating you. Something to has to motivate you to express yourself about your deep emotions that you have. And I think poetry is a very, very good way for someone to do that. Now, I realize that's not everybody's bag, but I think that, you know, it, it's a way to really reflect about how you feel about a person and about your relationship with a person. 
you know, I've tried and I'm still stuck on roses are red, violets are blue, and I can't <laughs> really get much further than that. So I'm going to use some of you said it was OK to use some of your poetry and I'll dazzle sure, my sure. wife who will know that it came from somebody other than myself. But uh, this book, this book is so well done. A couple minutes left in the program. What other books have you written and what are you thinking about doing next? Well, uh, it's, I'm. I have a textbook coming out from Springer, which is a medical textbook uh, called uh, Challenges in Foot and Ankle Reconstructive Surgery. It's uh, uh, about a 340-page book on 43 case studies on foot and ankle surgical procedures uh, and all case studies. So that's coming out in um, either this month or early next month. I just finished the finishing touches on that. Um, I also was a uh, guest editor on, on a clinic in foot and ankle surgery, uh, which we did Cavus foot, which is a name for a high arch foot. There's a lot of different things that can cause that, but I was uh, the uh, actual editor of that and wrote four, four articles in that. And that's a quarterly publication that uh, has a fair amount of esteem in our profession. And then I also wrote a chapter and a six volume set in immunology uh, in which I wrote the rheumatoid foot and ankle section. It's about a 45 or 50 page, uh, um, oh, uh, chapter yes. in that particular book. So that's what I've got now. And, uh, so as my wife says, you just can't rest. You always got to have something going. So, uh, I'm thinking about the next thing I'm going to be doing. Well, I was going to ask you about that. I got about a minute or so left in the program. You're a guy who keeps checking boxes, things that you would like to do. I'm a foot doctor, but I don't necessarily have to do things in foot doctoring. I can do other things, which you've done with this, this collection of poems. Are there any personal uh, goals you have in life left that you're working on out there? Well, you know, I, I, I think I was so busy with all this other stuff and getting this done that I haven't really sat down and reflected just exactly what would be uh, the next thing that uh, I would like to do. But I I can guarantee you it will be definitely something uh, because I'm just very goal oriented. I always set a goal and I always try uh, to attain that goal. I guess maybe the one would be to do the commencement at my college um, because that's the only one that I haven't done. And I don't know whether I will or I won't. Uh, I am on the board of trustees at my college, so I might have a little bit of an inside <laughs> edge there. And maybe I, I can um, <laughs> finagle my way that way. But um, I guess that might be the next thing I, I uh, to, to kind of finish things off there. But um, also, I've been working with uh, my colleagues in Europe. Uh, we've been looking at a collaboration on a, a new uh, textbook that would have uh, both the United States and European type of a flavor and approaches to foot and ankle surgery. Well, I'm sure whatever you do, you will do it well. You've done this with the poetry. The book is Poetic Reflection and Sedulous Romantica. Sedulous is S-E-D-U-L-O-U-S, Romantica. The author, our guest on the program, Dr. Harry John Visser, V is in Victor, I-S-S-E-R, the second. You'll find the book available at ChristianFaithPublishing.com, Amazon, all of the usual places, information on our website. Dr. Visser, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much for sharing uh, the success of this uh, excellent poetry book that you've written. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Thank you very much, Rick. I really enjoyed it. It has been our pleasure. Dr. Harry John Visser II, the book is Poetic Reflections in Sedulous Romantica. Information on our website, of course, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.